The purpose of Lab 3 is to get you starting to work with Agisoft Metashape and processing some imagery. So become familiar with the Agisoft uh, interface and uh, work through that photogrammetric workflow process. So the first thing we're going to do in a web browser, we need to get the software installed and uh, it's uh, agisoft.com. If we go there, then uh, we can come here to uh, downloads and we want the installer and you'll want to pick uh, either Windows, Mac or Linux. Uh, we'll just grab the Windows one here and it's going to go ahead and uh, give us a spot to put that and uh, it's going to go ahead and download. When it's done downloading then you'll want to run that installer and uh, get it installed on your computer. Um, in the event that we do not have the uh, full class licenses at, at this point, which uh, are forthcoming, but in, in that case you can just go ahead and, and sign up for the 30-day demo license for the software. That'll get us started and then we can update that with the floating license when we get that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, installed here and then I'll pick back up from there. All right, so I've got Metashape installed now, and I've also downloaded the uh, Lab 3 data set, the set of images that we're going to use. And so I want to fire up Metashape. This is what we get sort of right out of the box. And there's a couple of things to point out here. This is the main model window here. So um, your photos, your uh, stereo models, uh, all that stuff's going to show up here. And this is a 3D perspective. So you can uh, grab these things and drag them around. The photo tray at the bottom, uh, when we load our individual photos up, they'll show up in here. Uh, this is our workspace pane over on the left. So as we create products and do things, uh, we will see that information there. And then I've got a set of menus and, and tools along the top. And we'll uh, start getting into these a little bit um, as we kind of work our way through this lab. And then uh, in subsequent labs, we'll get deeper and deeper into the, the different tools and options. So the first thing that I need to do is load some images in here to work with. And uh, so that's under workflow. And then we can add photos or add folder. I have all of my photos for this lab in the same folder. And so I'll just come down here to uh, lab materials, lab three. And so they're all in this lab three images. Uh, folder. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and uh, it's going to say, okay, well, what kind of photos do you have? All of these are uh, images from a single camera. And so I'm going to go ahead and add all of that, that in. Now you can see my photos are populating here at the bottom. And if I double click on one of those photos, it will open it up here so I can uh, look at that individual photo. I can zoom in on it. Uh, or out as I need. And then when I'm done, I can just uh, close this tab and it will return me to the main model page. Now, notice these points in the main model page. So these are the uh, GPS locations of each of the photos that were, uh, that were taken with the drone. And I can zoom out on them and, and see the whole set of them here. And, then, and as I click on one, um, I can uh, I can highlight it and see where it is in the in my image block. Um, by the way, uh, Metashape calls them chunks. We, we've called them blocks so far in class. Um, and the first thing that I need to do is align these images. So it, it, it knows there's an image somewhere around this point, but it doesn't know what its exterior orientation is. And so we're going to use the uh, image alignment tool here to have it estimate what the exterior orientation is for each of these points. So again, under workflow, go and then align photos. And uh, at this point, we're just going to use the defaults, right? So uh, just, just leave everything as it is and go ahead and click OK. Now this process could take a while. I've tried to keep the uh, image set small for, for class, but uh, depending on the computer that you're running this on, this may take a little bit of time to run. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and then we'll pick back up once it's done uh, aligning the photos. All right, so the image alignment is done and uh, you'll notice a couple of things just looking at the 
uh, window here. First is that it has now turned each of these points into uh, a representation of the photo itself. And uh, so this is a 3D view, so I can grab the controls here in the center and then tilt this on its axis. If I right click on my mouse and drag, I, that, that pans the image. And really, uh, take some time and work with this, uh, this 3D interface if you're, if, if you're not sort of used to, to using this kind of thing. Um, definitely spend some time getting oriented to it and figuring out how to, uh, how to move around. The, um, so, so sort of left click uh, rotates, uh, right click pans. Uh, the scroll wheel on my mouse zooms in and out. That's a little bit different on a laptop, but there are sort of uh, correlates to that as well. And so now I have my exterior orientation estimated for each one of the, of the images. And uh, we have the tie points created for all of the images too. And uh, it's gone ahead and then for each of the tie points, it's projected the actual like ground coordinate position for uh, those tie points and that creates this sparse point cloud which is underneath uh, my my set of photos right and so there's a few things that we can uh, that we can look at there one is we get just a rough sense of the topography of the of this landscape right there's a little bit of a slope into a valley bottom here uh, we can start to see some of the vegetation as well um, but ultimately we're going to use these uh, tie points in this sparse point cloud in order to uh, improve the accuracy of the process and then we will create a dense point cloud which we will then use for uh, subsequent you know the the digital elevation model and the uh, ortho mosaic so um, yeah so this whole process of aligning these photos on my computer took uh, well let's see we can go to the console here at the bottom and uh, yeah, so it took 400 seconds. So what's that? Six and a half, six and a half, seven minutes that it took running on my computer, um, which is not my computer's nothing special. So um, so yeah, hopefully it won't take too uh, too long for you. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, first thing we need to do at this point then is actually save the project. So I'm just going to come in here and call it Lab Three. Um, when you're saving the project, it's just saving the, uh, the, the, the sort of information for the steps that you've done uh, so far. So it's, it's not actually saving the raw images separate from when you loaded them up. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. If you move or delete these original images, it's, it's going to be uh, unhappy with you. Okay, so some file management is a good idea. Make sure you know where you're saving things, where your imagery is, where your project files are. Um, that's going to pay dividends uh, down the road. All right, so in the subsequent labs, we're going to, uh, to, to sort of work through all of the different options for how we can uh, use this Sparks Point Cloud and, and uh, you know, improve our results. For today in this lab, we're just going to kind of work through these steps one at a time um, just to get a flavor for how this whole thing works. So we have our sparse point cloud. Then the next thing we need to do under workflow is build a dense point cloud. And uh, for today, for the, the sake of, uh, of you know, keeping everything moving along, we're going to choose low for uh, our quality and then just leave all of the other options as they are and, uh, and go ahead and hit OK. Now there's two uh, there's two stages in the structure for motion workflow that take a long time. The, the first one is aligning the images, and then the second one is uh, creating this dense point cloud. And uh, I'm going to let this run here, and I'll come back uh, then after it's finished. All right, so our dense point cloud is done uh, being created. And uh, when it finishes, you won't see anything like, like right away. Um, there's two ways to kind of get to it. We can uh, expand this, uh, our chunk one in the workspace here, and we can see now that we have a dense point cloud uh, that is created, and I can double click on that. Uh, the other way to get to it is this button up here at the top, which is the dense cloud button. Prior to creating the dense cloud, that was actually grayed out, so I can click on that now. And you can see we actually now have a much more detailed representation 
um, of this uh, surface and uh, you know we can zoom in on this and start to see some detail. If we're zoom way in then, then we actually see that this is in fact a collection of, of points um, that were created uh, from this, uh, this densification process. Okay, so uh, that's the dense point cloud. And this is the first of the real products that you get from, uh, from Structure for Motion. A lot of my research is, is actually deals with uh, analyzing these point clouds and looking at vegetation structure and, uh, and estimating vegetation properties based off of these point clouds. Um, so uh, from here, this is the base then from which we're going to generate the other uh, photogrammetric products. And so the next thing we're going to do is uh, create a DEM. And so we can go to workflow and build DEM for digital elevation model. Now, um, it will let you build a, a DEM and an ortho mosaic using um, a, uh, a geographic decimal degrees coordinate system. That's generally not a really great sort of uh, practice. You should pick a projected coordinate system. And so, uh, I've used this uh, UTM NAD83, uh, NAD83 UTM Zone 11 projection. You may have to go to more and search for that, but that's the appropriate one to use in this case. Um, and then uh, we're going to have the dense point cloud as the source, and we'll just leave these other options uh, as their defaults. And I'll go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to create this DEM. Uh, it shouldn't take too long to do it, so we'll just uh, be patient here. Okay, now notice on my uh, workspace uh, menu here at the left, I have a DEM now, and so I can double click on that. And uh, there's my elevation model for, the, uh, for, for this area. And we'll talk about these in subsequent labs, but you'll notice that I've got some sort of weird smudging and stuff happening here at the edges, and that's just due to uh, poor reconstruction because I didn't have enough overlap, uh, image overlap at the edges. Okay, but generally it's this center portion uh, uh, is what we're really interested in. Okay, so there's my elevation model, um, and then the elevation model is the base for creating an ortho mosaic, and the ortho mosaic is just a stitched together version of the original images, but these images are, are now corrected for their uh, terrain displacement and their perspective displacement. Okay, so uh, I can go to workflow, uh, build ortho mosaic, and uh, this is all fixed now because I'm basing it off of my DEM, and I'm just going to use all of the sort of standard options here, and I'm going to hit OK, and uh, it will sort of process this. This may take a couple minutes, so I'll stop and then come back after it's done. All right, so my ortho mosaic is done. That took a couple of minutes, wasn't too too bad. And you can see now in my workspace list, I've got an ortho mosaic here at the bottom. Um, I also have the ortho mosaic button on the toolbar now is, uh, is active. And so I can either click that or I can double click down here and it will open my ortho mosaic and now we can we can actually zoom in and and this is looking pretty good uh, nice sort of representation of this uh, of this site uh, I've got a, a bit of a stream here that's coming through um, this is a monitoring plot where uh, a crew is actually in here collecting the monitoring data and you can see their their tracks from when they were in there that's pretty cool too so nice looking product at the end and that's sort of the last thing we need to do for this lab. So go ahead and save your project. And then what I'd like you to do is uh, to generate a, uh, a report. And uh, so go up here to File and Export Generate Report. And then for the title, uh, give it your name and then Lab 3. And then the description, you can, uh, you can fill in something there if you want, or you can leave it as it is. Uh, and this is going to create a PDF report of this, um, you know, of the processing for this site. And uh, this is what I want you to, uh, to submit. So uh, we'll go ahead here and uh, so I'll call it uh, J. Carl Lab 3 Report. And it's going to go ahead and do its thing. And 
Okay, it sort of popped my report up. Let's resize this so it fits in my window here. There we go. All right, and so, uh, so again, this is what I want you to turn in. It's got a, a sort of representation of the ortho mosaic. And then as we scroll down, it's got some useful information. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit more about what all this means. But this is uh, just sort of a summary of your image overlap. Um, and, uh, you know, sort of basic information, uh, camera calibration information. This one's interesting because it shows how much it had to move each of the photos in order to, uh, to figure out the exterior orientation. And uh, here's our digital elevation model, right? Um, and, and some other sort of supporting information. So these are useful to have um, as documentation of the, of the process. And again, we'll get into a little bit more detail on, on what all the information in the reports means and how to interpret it. But for now, um, create the report and then upload the report to BB Learn for Lab 3.